right, what's up, what's up? Another day, another vlog. We're excited today. I'm going to meet up with a client of mine in Hong Kong. We are going to be working together at the Mandarin today and doing some poker coaching. We've got a six to eight hour day ahead of us. Mandarin with Horace, got some poker studying going on, we're getting into the numbers. What do you think so far about the day? Yeah, I like it's a very, very good guy and he explains everything in details and I really love it. I am enjoying the session. Awesome yeah. man, this is great. So we're taking a break for lunch, we're gonna go to IFC Mall and then come back and crunch some more. Yeah. Looks good. Great lunch. <laughs> Enjoy it. So I'm here with my client, Morris. We're working together in Hong Kong. Yeah. And one of the focuses of today's session is a few of the questions that he had for me. Why don't you tell him what you're struggling with and then I'll help answer it in the video. Yeah, actually I have a problem dealing with uh, how to play with a uh, you know, free blind game, like three blind game. against straddle or Mississippi straddle. Yep. Yeah, so I would like to ask how do we adjust to the, that kind of situation, that kind of game. Awesome question, let's yeah. do it. This is a great question, and I know a lot of you play in games with various types of straddles, so I'm gonna address in this video different types of straddles that you're gonna face and the best way to adjust to these games as well. The first type of straddle you're gonna face is a normal straddle from under the gun. This is the most common type of straddle, basically under the gun posting two big blinds, therefore you're being in a three blind game. Straddle games happen often and frequently, but before we get into straddle strategy, the first thing I'd like to discuss is whether or not you should straddle to begin with. A lot of people are writing to me and asking me like, is it good to straddle to give off the image that I'm a loose player only to get paid off later? The short answer is no. Straddling is never a good play to make because you're losing more money than your image is gaining you in the future. So I would never recommend to straddle unless the game is playing where everybody is straddling or there's a very specific reason which happens very infrequently so don't get carried away where the game is about to die and you want to kind of initiate or kick up the action and say hey guys let's straddle to kind of turn the game around and get some juice going but other than that you should pretty much never straddle yourself but that's not to stop you from learning how to play when other people do straddle so one thing you want to consider when someone else straddles is ranges should be a little bit tighter because there are three people in the blind. So the small blind, for example, can play way, way fewer hands. So if you're in the small blind, that's the first position I'd like to address, you should be playing absolutely way tighter than you normally are because there are two people behind you. So if it folds to you in the small blind, it's not necessarily a great spot, or if someone like the cutoff opens, your three betting range in the small blind should be tighter than it normally is because you're there are two people behind you and you're, more, you're out of position against more players. So ranges should be a little bit tighter from the small blind and the big blind, and your straddle range should be the same as your big blind range. Ah, excuse me. Hello? The types of hands that you play from the straddle should be the same as the types of hands you're playing from the big blind. Now, one thing to keep in mind is what hands should you be opening with when there are three blinds. On one hand, you wanna open looser because there's more dead money, right? There's three blinds instead of two. And on another hand, you wanna be tighter because there are three people left to act when you're on the button, for example, rather than two people left to act. So I would generally open a little bit tighter because there are three people, and I would kind of adjust my play based on how they're playing. Like sometimes people in the small blind, when there's a straddle, play absolutely zero hands, in which case you can then go back to opening up a little bit looser. And other times people are gonna be crazy from the straddle. They're gonna three bet a lot from those blinds, the small blind and the big blind. And so therefore I would play a little bit tighter. So you really have to kind of feel out the games that you're playing in and understand how those games play and how people play in each position when there is a straddle involved. Now generally one thing that I notice that happens in live games when there's a straddle is people sometimes oddly play different because they perceive the stakes as higher so their ranges get tighter. In other words, they play less hands. So you'd see a, hand, uh, see a situation where like if you're playing, let's say you're playing a 2-5 uh, you know, game and there's a $10 straddle and someone has $1,000 at the table they might not necessarily get all the money in with a hand they would normally get all the money in if, they're, if they only had 500 at the table and it was a 2-5 game. And the reason is because 
in their mind, they're playing with double the amount of money. So they're playing with $1,000. And so they're still thinking like they're 200 big blinds deep, even though they're only 100 big blinds deep. So I noticed that in straddled games, the ranges are way, way tighter. And getting all in with 100 big blinds in a straddle game is not the same thing usually as getting all in with 100 big blinds in a normal game because people play tighter. So you want to kind of keep that in mind and use that as a generic approach towards straddle games and then deviate from that if you notice people start playing the same. That's a great way to approach straddle games. Now the second type of straddle game you're going to find is a Mississippi straddle. And this is where someone straddles two big blinds on the button and then the action starts with the small blind. Now in this game if you're in the small blind or the big blind you pretty much can't play any hands because if you, you know, you're out of position against eight other players and you're in the worst position post-flop. So it's really, really tough to play hands from the small blind and the big blind. And a lot of people tend to limp in from the small blind or the big blind because it's, you know, it's so cheap to see the flop. But I think this is a mistake. And the reason is because people usually raise when you limp. So you're just wasting one or two big blinds by limping in the smaller or the big blind. I would much prefer people to fold and play tighter from those positions and then play the hand accordingly. Now, as the the hand progresses you still have to play tighter from each position simply because you're out of position against the button and you're going to be out of position against him later on in subsequent streets the button has a ton of incentive to call and generally players that play the mississippi straddle that do it themselves are going to play looser from the button thereby making it more difficult for you to raise profitably pre-flop because you're always going to be out of position so i play very tight in mississippi straddle games and i think tight is the right way to play because the Mississippi straddle forces players to play so tight, I'm generally not in favor of it. And if you can object or avoid the Mississippi straddle in your game, I highly recommend doing so. I personally think it kills the action. That's it for today's episode. If you want more from me, subscribe to this channel. There's awesome content coming your way from Hong Kong and Macau where I'm coaching and playing some high stakes poker. So be sure to subscribe to this channel for some awesome content. If you're interested in learning more about my coaching program, you could click the link below and get access to all that information as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Awesome session, had lunch. What'd you think of the rest of the day? Very, very nice. Had a very productive uh, time spent with Alex and learned a lot from him. Awesome. I guess the key takeaway, I mean, there were, there were definitely a lot of key takeaways from the lesson, but one of the ones from a strategic standpoint that I think really we drove home was just how much tighter people need to play in general to have correct ranges pre-flop. He was playing too loose in too many spots, still winning a decent, like a, a, a large amount BBs per hundred. He's still winning a lot. But I think the adjustments we made to his pre-flop game, both from a three betting standpoint and a calling standpoint, is really gonna make him uh, reach that next level that he's looking for. So I think that's it for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow for some more content.